Like I said, my name is Josh Coles, and I am the museum director at Friends of the Chicago River. Uh, I'm the museum director of the McCormick Bridge House and Chicago River Museum, um, and that's what this presentation is all about today. So this presentation is part of the My Chicago River Day Summer Challenge, um, of course, hosted by Friends of the Chicago River. Now the Summer Challenge is a, uh, or a part of the Summer Challenge, um, we have these educational programs every other Saturday of the month. So you may have tuned into a few of the ones earlier this season, but we do still have a few coming up. Um, August 8th, we have Bringing Back Native Plants with Mark Hauser. August 22nd, we're uh, discussing the creating a blue-green corridor and so on. So please tune in to those if you can. Uh, obviously, you know how to register, so uh, feel free to register for those other great events coming up later this year. I do wanna take a minute to thank our uh, Chicago River Day 2020 sponsors. Uh, these are all of them. And in specifically, I would love to, uh, to uh, feature this week's uh, sponsor, the Cynthia Weglar's Round Tree Fund. Um, this fund is a long running Chicago River Day uh, sponsor. And you can see from some photos here that they come out every year to help clean up litter and participate in the uh, Chicago River Day. So thank you to them um, uh, and we greatly appreciate them. So Friends of the Chicago River, we have three program areas at Friends. We have on the ground projects, uh, which include our habitat restorations, some things like dam removal, Chicago River Day, uh, policy planning, uh, which we have uh, creating the Blue Green Corridor, which I already talked about and some of our advocacy work. And of course, education and outreach, which is what the Bridge House Museum fits into. For the summer challenge, you can actually get out and clean up litter. Um, you can do that by going to chicagoriver.org and signing up. We'd love to uh, have you participate and put your, put your picture on our map that we have. Um, of course, any litter that you clean up is preventing that from going into the Chicago River system itself. So uh, any piece of litter outside of your house, it's one rainstorm away from ending up in the Chicago River. So anything that you clean up really does help uh, protect people, plants, and animals. Now today we're talking all about the McCormick Bridge House and Chicago River Museum, which is a part of our education and outreach program at Friends. Um, I'm the director of the museum and I've been with Friends for over three years now uh, running this program. So today I'm gonna give you a little bit of a history of the museum itself, uh, talk about all the programs that we have run there and some stuff about the future. Um, a very cool thing that we're doing today is uh, I will give you a sneak peek of the new exhibit that we'll be putting into the museum for this season of uh, 2020, it's actually going in next week. So we're very excited about uh, showing that to you and hopefully you can see it in person sometime soon. I do wanna mention that if you have questions during this presentation, please put them in the chat. I will be looking at the chat at the very end of this presentation to uh, answer any questions that you have. So feel free to, answer, to ask anything throughout this whole thing and I'll take a look at that at the end. I'll go through all of the questions. So first off, what is the McCormick Bridge House and Chicago River Museum? So um, the Bridge House Museum, which is what I'll refer to as, uh, is a project of Friends of the Chicago River and it opened in 2006. Uh, the Bridge House Museum celebrates the Chicago River and its world famous bridges and it's located in the historic Michigan Avenue Bridge House. The museum itself is laid out chronologically over the five stories. So as you work your way up through the bridge house, you're working your way through Chicago River's history, which of course is so intertwined with Chicago's history itself. Uh, the museum also contains our gear room, which takes you inside the bridge to see the inner workings. And it's really the only place in Chicago that you can see a working bridge from the inside. So when we talk about the Bridge House Museum, of course, we have to talk about the DuSable Bridge. Uh, the DuSable Bridge is uh, 100 years old and it turned 100 this year on May 14th, 2020. When the bridge was built in 1920, it was the first double leaf, double deck, Bascule Trunnion Bridge. So what does that mean? Um, it's a mouthful. So double leaf means that it has two leaves on each side 
So they just kind of open independently from each other. And double deck means that it has a um, upper deck and a lower deck that both carry vehicular traffic. The bridge connected Michigan Avenue on the south to uh, Pine Street to the north, which was at that time a dirt road. And it completely changed the north side of the river from that dirt road to an extension of the Grand Boulevard to the south. So here's some construction photos of the uh, bridge. And on the right there, we have a photo of the grand celebration on May 14th, 1920. Uh, when the bridge opened in 1920, the adjacent bridge houses were actually not completely finished and uh, they did not get completely finished with all their decorative elements until 1928. So what exactly is a bridge house and why would we ever consider putting a museum in one? Uh, the bridge house was and is used to open and close the movable bridges and each movable bridge in Chicago has between one and four bridge houses attached to it. The Michigan Avenue Bridge House specifically, um, the one that we occupy, it was never a functional bridge house. Uh, it was always decorative and was not used to open or close the bridge. Uh, the Northwest and Southeast Bridge Houses on the Michigan Avenue Bridge are used for this purpose. Uh, so the Southeast Bridge House uh, opens the South Leaf and the Northeast or Northwest Bridge House opens the North Leaf. Um, so, the bridge house that we occupy was always empty. It was used for storage or um, other city um, uses. Um, so this made it the perfect building to convert into a museum. And of course our museum celebrates the history of the Chicago River. So what better place to do it than uh, Michigan Avenue. The Basquiat Trunnion Bridge. So Basquiat is a French word that translates roughly to seesaw. And it is called that because of the balance that the bridge itself achieves. This is advantageous to be in a movable bridge because this balance allows a motor to raise and lower the bridge without using a huge amount of power. Um, in fact, each leaf of this particular Basque bridge can be raised and lowered using only a motor the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, which is roughly 100 horsepower, a little over 100 horsepower. So here's a, um, here's a photo of the bridge being raised. Uh, the Michigan Avenue Bridge was renamed the Du Sable Bridge in 2010 after Jean-Baptiste Point Du Sable, who was the first non-Native American permanent resident in Chicago. Uh, du Sable's residence was on the north side of the river, uh, pretty much where the Apple Store is today or at the base of the Tribune Tower. Um, as you can see in this photo, the bridge is a double leaf, double deck basket. Um, you can see both levels there really clearly. So the, so the lower level there carries traffic um, to Lower Wacker if you're going south, and the top um, obviously carries traffic as well. So as I was putting together this, um, this presentation, I thought it might be cool to show the original state of the bridge house. So this looks much differently than it does today if you've ever been in the Bridge House Museum. Uh, so prior to the Bridge House opening in 2006, the inside uh, looked pretty much like this. Uh, friends in the city of Chicago both worked to transform the inside of the museum for several years before it opened to the public. Uh, new railings, HVAC, electric heating elements, and finally the exhibit were eventually installed. So I have a few cool photos here. You can see there at the top right, that's the large porthole windows that we have. Uh, the lower left is a uh, photo of the up, upper floor. And the two on the right are the first floor of the bridge house. A few more photos of those. The um, that railing going up that door, that's on the third floor, which uh, goes out to the top level of the bridge. And that's where most of the city employees enter the bridge houses. Some more photos of that third floor there. Here's some photos of the, uh, the exhibit being installed around 2005, 2006. This next one is the gear room, freshly installed. So you can see those giant gears, it's the same gears that were there when it was built in 1920. There we have opening day in 2006. 
It's a very exciting day, I'm sure. I wish I could, uh, could have seen it in person. That's our executive director there, Margaret Frisbee. Here's some before and after photos. So the top floor on the top there, and then the third floor on the bottom, you can see a vast difference. And this is the first floor with the new exhibits. We sometimes used to have our speaker series inside. Here's some decorative elements here. Uh, that's the third floor there, of course, and then uh, the decorative elements in the lobby. I thought this photo was quite nice. It shows a pre-river walk. Um, you can see that it was winter time, but uh, outside the museum used to look vastly different. If you would see this today, there would be, well, maybe not today, but <laughs> but usually there's a lot of people walking along the, along the river walk. There's restaurants. There's a community marketplace just adjacent to us now that sells local Chicago items. So it's a very, very different site these days. And the river itself is very different as well. So this is the museum around, around the dates that it opened. Um, that element right in the river there, that is uh, Friends Fish Hotel. Uh, it served a purpose to uh, provide habitat for uh, fish, other wildlife, that um, that was not there prior to this fish hotel. Uh, the, the downtown river area is mostly seawalls, so habitat is very sparse. Uh, so we had this idea to install a floating habitat, basically. So uh, fish could go underneath these native plants, uh, mate and hide in their root systems, birds could come and eat the insects that would make their homes there. So it was a very important uh, concept to bring to the downtown area. Uh, this was removed and actually the city then installed a very similar item at the jetty on the Riverwalk, which is still there today. And it's a very, um, a very diverse array of plants and animals uh, use it every day to hide and mate and uh, find some food. So the Bridge House Museum itself uh, over the year, we've ho hosted countless special events at the museum, and uh, I'm going to highlight a few of those. Uh, the Plain Air Painting event in 2018 brought together 25 plus artists to do Plain Air Painting, which is an open air painting style completed in a short amount of time. Uh, the finished pieces were sold with a portion of the proceeds benefiting the museum. Uh, we still have a few of them inside the museum, so um, you can probably take a look at those hopefully when we open this year. The Asian Carp Grill is an event that we had for many years. Uh, this was held with Dirk's Fish, which is a local fish market. Uh, the event was not only a fun event with good food, but also an advocacy piece highlighting the issue of the invasive Asian carp, which uh, are not in the Chicago River system, but they are downstream and uh, we're certainly keeping an eye on that with other partners. Uh, the Tender House Project is a temporary exhibit that uh, we have had over the past few years and we will have this year as well. Um, it is created, curated by a local architect and designer, Mijay Gula, and seeks to discover ways to activate the unused bridge houses in Chicago. It is also a course at SAIC for graduate students in architecture. So as a part of that, we've had uh, Tender House project has uh, activated our bridge house to bring in musicians and art installations. So uh, Ben Lamar Gay is a jazz musician in Chicago. He's pictured there and you can see his full performance performing along with a bridge lift on YouTube if you search his name. Uh, the Tender House project also activated uh, the third floor of our bridge house the first year in 2018. Uh, they built a screen in one of the large round porthole windows to project home movies of the river and the lake from the 1950s to the 1980s. It's a very cool project. And the Southside Home Movie Project is, a, is, a, uh, uh, is affiliated with the University of Chicago. 
We've had musical performances at the museum, both inside and out, and plan to do much more. Um, it's actually pretty cool uh, that our new neighbor is the Beat Kitchen, which is a music venue in Chicago. So uh, we're hoping to partner with them to bring in more musical performances on the patio space mostly. We posted several pop-up shops in the museum. Um, we've also hosted a few festivals as well. Uh, the one pictured here is a pop-up shop called Give a Shirt, and they have operated out of the museum for one to three days every winter since 2016. Uh, the shop is produced and run by Daily Planet, and all the proceeds that they make from this, this uh, screen printing pop-up shop are donated to Streetwise which benefits uh, people experiencing homelessness in Chicago. We are always a part of Open House Chicago, which is one of the most exciting festivals in Chicago every fall. And we're proud to be a venue that has participated every year that it has existed. Uh, it's always our most busy weekend every year with up to 8,000 guests going through the museum uh, over the course of two days, which as you can imagine is pretty hard in our tiny little space. Um, it's always a hectic weekend, but we're always very excited about it. I'm not sure if they're planning to move ahead with Open House this year, I haven't heard, but I'm sure that um, there's, we have some friends from Chicago Architecture Center on the presentation today that could answer that. The Summer Cruise is our annual fundraiser for the museum and it brings up to 250 guests onto the Chicago River on a Wendella boat. Uh, it always has an open bar and uh, food and live entertainment and it's always a joy to organize and we look forward to it every year. Uh, we look forward to bringing it back in June of 2021. Rentals at the Bridge House Museum. Uh, so rentals have ranged from pretty much anything you can imagine, from weddings, birthday parties. We had a Chicago-themed uh, NFL party for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year, um, and pretty much anything else you can imagine. Uh, we're always open to ideas and can provide one of the most unique uh, and purely Chicago spaces in the city. And uh, if you do have questions about rentals, we have a a page on our website that you can check out. Um, and you can always email me and ask me about our rates and uh, see what we can do. I have a few photos of some past, um, past rentals you can see here that uh, you can utilize both our inside and outdoor spaces. Um, the outdoor on the side here, this was part of that NFL party and they actually brought Chicago style hot dogs into our gear room, which was pretty cool from Portillo's I think it is. Some more photos of some uh, rentals. You can use the whole museum as well. Uh, we also have a lecture series that happens every summer. Uh, it's been ongoing for many years and brings river topics and experts to the uh, river itself. Um, last year, our topics included research on litter, dam removal, uh, native fish research, water quality improvements, and many other things. It's always a pleasure to organize and I love to, um, to bring those experts down to the river to uh, give this free lunchtime series. So it's always free as well. One of our most popular special events is our bridge lift viewing, which sometimes even includes a catered breakfast in the morning in the fall. Uh, the museum is the perfect space to experience this event from the outside and the only place to experience it from the inside. So you can actually move inside a working bridge to view the gears and the other mechanisms moving while the bridge lifts. It never really gets old either. I love it. I'm so excited every time it happens. So I actually do have a video of a bridge lift I'd like to show you. Let me see if this will work here. It's just a YouTube video, but let's see.
Okay. Get back to the presentation here. So that's, that's a bridge lift. We do have bridge lifts every uh, spring and fall at the museum. So the bridge typically only lifts every spring and the fall, and that's because it lifts for the sailboats that are going out to the lake or even further. Um, so the city of Chicago, the Department of Transportation organizes the bridge lifts and it provides these services to the boats. So the sailboats or whoever, any other tall ships can sign up for those slots. Um, the bridge has lifted in the summer or the winter on special occasions, but uh, those are only, or those are very few and far in between. So uh, the museum has received quite a bit of press over the last few years, and that includes main stories in the Tribune, the Sometimes, WGN, a cover story on the Weekly Red Eye, and much more. Uh, we also celebrated a huge milestone last year by welcoming our 250,000th guest to the museum since its opening in 2006. So that was a very fun day to welcome. Those are the, the three guests that were, one of them was the 250,000th. I'm not quite sure which, maybe the middle one. Okay, with that, I am going to uh, give you a little virtual tour of the museum. Uh, now, I would like you to know that as of taping, we are uh, removing the exhibits that will be replaced. So consider this kind of a sneak peek behind the curtain. Uh, so you'll see a little bit of a, uh, the museum in a, a state that we wouldn't uh, show people usually. <laughs> Uh, so I went in and removed all the exhibits on the first floor and the fifth floor. So you'll, you'll see that in the virtual tour. Um, so this will be about a 10 minute video. Uh, I will play that for you now. Hi there, my name is Josh Coles and I am the museum director down here on the Chicago Riverwalk at the McCormick Bridge House and Chicago River Museum. Uh, the Bridge House Museum itself is a project of Friends of the Chicago River, and I am down here today on July 22nd for two reasons. Number one, I am working on uh, preparing the museum for a brand new exhibit that we're putting in this season. And number two, I wanted to stop down here and give you a virtual tour to show you all the renovation and construction that we're doing and uh, give you a tour of the existing exhibit that we have in the museum. Uh, so I will start outside on the Chicago Riverwalk and walk you through the whole five stories of the bridge house. Okay, we are out here on the Chicago Riverwalk and what you're looking at right now is the DuSable Bridge, which is uh, the bridge attached to the Michigan Avenue Bridge House. Uh, the DuSable Bridge turned 100 years this year on May 14th, 2020 and we celebrated that through a virtual um, celebration in May. So as we turn, see our sign for the Bridge House Museum, and what we're gonna do is walk inside to the area that is the lobby. You can see that this brand new restaurant opened up next to us today called the Beat Kitchen, or this year, rather. So here you step into the lobby of the Bridge House Museum, and it doesn't look like much right now because we are renovating this area to be a brand new exhibit in 2020. So what you'll see in this area is a brand new entrance display covering our storeroom here and a new wayfinding panel on the side. As we enter the museum space itself, you see two restrooms on the side here, and uh, we'll turn into the first floor. All right, so we're gonna go into the museum itself. This is the first floor of the museum, and as we walk in here, you can tell that there is a lot going on in this room. There's construction, there's painting, all the exhibits are off the walls. The reason for that is that we are installing all new panels on the first floor of the museum for the 2020 season. Uh, the panels on these walls are designed by the firm Space House, which is a local Chicago uh, design firm. And the, uh, the theme of this floor is, um, 
is all about pre-settlement Chicago region um, and very early settlement. So uh, this, these panels will describe how the region was formed through glaciers and through uh, burning of the prairies, um, all about the Native Americans that made this area their home and some very uh, critical events that happened in pre-settlement and early European settlement. Another portion of the museum that is on this floor is what we call our gear room. So this is the inside of the Sable Bridge itself. As we walk in, it might get a little bit louder. Most of the exhibits have also been taken off of the walls in this room, just to clean it up and prepare for the 2020 season. Now this room is very exciting because it holds the enormous gears that operate the DuSable Bridge to this day. Uh, the DuSable Bridge is a vascular trunnion bridge. And it, as I have said earlier, it is 100 years old this year, May 14th, 2020. Now the exhibits in this, uh, in this area talk all about, you can see they're bare right now, but uh, they tell you all about uh, bridges in Chicago, the different types of movable bridges, and some information on how they work. So as we walk in here, you can see that there's, uh, there's the motors that operate the bridge. It's a little dark back there today, but uh, if you uh, were here, you could peek back there and take a look at the motors that still operate it. You can hear all the noises from the bridge itself. And, uh, whenever this bridge is actually moving, which happens a few dozen times a year, uh, you can see these giant gears moving and operating the bridge. It's a very cool thing to see. And I would suggest that uh, I, you would check out our website and make some reservations for our fall lifts, which we're hoping to have up there in the next month or two. Okay, we're back here on the first floor. So what we're gonna do is walk up to the next floor Floors two through four are not being renovated, so they are not going to have any new exhibit for the 2020 season. So the Bridge House Museum itself is five stories. And the way it's laid out is the exhibits work through time uh, to tell you the story of Chicago in relation to the river. So this floor, is all about when the population of Chicago started to increase after European settlement. So on this floor, you can learn all about the Illinois-Michigan Canal, the straightening of the mouth of the river, all about Bubbly Creek and the factories and farms that surrounded it, and quite a bit about the sewer systems and the raising of Chicago. As we go to the next floor, you'll get some good views. This floor also holds some of our artifacts from, uh, from bridge houses in Chicago. So you can see some of the mechanisms that would have operated bridges in the past. You also get some, some great old photographs and diagrams of some interesting history. You can also take a look out these enormous windows here to see the river walk. Here we have some more artifacts here. Next, we'll go up to the fourth floor. Okay, we are still walking up to the fourth floor. There's a little bit of a landing here that walks out to the street. Now, as we go up to the fourth floor, as I said, we're going through time. So the fourth floor begins around 1900, when there were a lot of waterborne illnesses uh, occurring from people drinking polluted water. Um, and the reason for that is that a lot of the uh, sewage and pretty much anything you could think of was being thrown into the Chicago River 
And the Chicago River at that point was emptying into Lake Michigan. And of course, Lake Michigan is the drinking water for uh, the region. So uh, this floor describes how uh, the Chicago River was ultimately reversed to remedy that. And much of the backlash around it as well. Now, as we move forward, we hit around the 1970s when uh, the deep tunnel, also known as TARP, uh, was developed by the MWRD. And these panels describe that system. These panels also describe the formation of Friends of the Chicago River in 1979 to give you a sense of how the organization was born. Now the fifth floor is the last floor of the museum, so we'll go up there next. All right, we are walking up. This is the very top floor of the Bridge House Museum. And an exciting thing about that is that there are no panels on this floor. Where's the exhibit? It's exciting because we are completely renovating this entire floor to have all new information on it. So after this uh, virtual tour, you will actually be able to get a sneak peek of these new exhibits that we'll be putting up here and some of the information that can be found on them. We're very excited to show our visitors uh, many of the things that organizations like Chicago, like Friends of the Chicago River have done to improve the quality of the river over the last 15 years since the museum was built. Also on this floor, you get some great 360 views of downtown Chicago. So this is looking south down Michigan Avenue. Here we are looking east towards Lake Michigan. Once again, see the north looking over the bridge towards the Wrigley building here. And we have some great views looking west down to the other bridges. Thank you again for joining me on this virtual tour of the McCormick Bridge House and Chicago River Museum. Again, we are a project of Friends of the Chicago River, so you can find some information about the museum itself on Friends of the Chicago River's website, but you can also go to our website, www.bridgehousemuseum.org. Of course, we are uh, very eager to open up for the 2020 season, but we do have to complete all of these renovations before we're able to actually open up for the season. So we're hoping that we can probably open sometime in uh, mid to late August this year. And all of those updates will be on our website as well. So after this, I will give you a sneak peek at some of those new exhibits. And again, thank you so much. Take care. Okay, we are back. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so now I'm gonna give you a uh, sneak peek at those new exhibits. I have not included all of them, so you'll have to come to the museum to check out uh, all of them and to see them in person. So we will start here with the uh, lobby panel. So this will be about eight feet tall and it will be the first thing you see when you walk into the museum. Um, before there was a city, there was a river. So uh, the city of Chicago would have never been here if the Chicago River wasn't here. Uh, this is a photo of um, of, I believe, Horner Park. It's on the north branch of the Chicago River, but it shows the Chicago River in uh, somewhat of its natural state. So it would have had some uh, sloping banks, very gradual sloping banks. It would meander. It was pretty slow uh, moving. So we wanted to show the river in a state that didn't have any uh, man-made structures or anything like that in it. It also has a map of the river system. Uh, which includes the Calumet, of course, and it has some text on there for the visitors. Also on the first floor, right next to this map, will be a wayfinding panel, which will show our guests exactly what they're going to see inside of the bridge house. So one of the things that we always get a question of whenever people walk in is what is in here? So we really wanted to be able to show people what is inside and that they can actually go up inside of this bridge house, uh, which most people don't realize they can. 
This is a panel that will be on the first floor. Uh, it, it talks about um, the name of Chicago, which is uh, after a, um, a species of wild onion. Um, it gives you some information on why prairies burn and why that's a good thing and how that formed uh, the type of plants and um, ultimately the kinds of animals that rely on them in this region. And it gives you some information about the, uh, the First Nations Native Americans that lived here. This will also be found on our first floor. Um, it gives some information on the arrival of Europeans, uh, some information on ja uh, Jean Baptiste Point de Sable, and some information on Fort Dearborn. And all of this information was already in the museum. It's just now being uh, given to you in a different way. Now this is going to be on our top floor. So all of this information is new to the museum itself. And I am not gonna include everything on the top floor, uh, but I will show you a few panels that will be up there. This one is called Full of Life. So it gives you some information on uh, native animals and native plants and um, some other information on um, why Chicago is so important to the wildlife that it supports. Of course, this is not a exhaustive list of all of the plants and animals found, but it gives you a good sense of some of them. This panel uh, gives you an idea of why clean water is essential. Um, it gives you a sense of um, why the Clean Water Act worked at the time and why we need to expand upon it and uh, when can we swim in the river? That's always a question that we get and it tries to answer that for you and what that really means in the scheme of things. We also get a lot of questions about the climate crisis and how we're responding to it. So this panel will uh, try to answer those questions a bit for you. Also, all of the photos on these panels um, are, or I, I should say most of the photos on these panels are from local Chicago photographers, um, many of whom have volunteered for Friends of the Chicago River over the years. So we wanted to acknowledge them by uh, using their photographs within our Bridge House Museum. So if you're watching, thank you. And with that, um, I am going to take some questions. I do want to mention that you can support Friends by becoming a member. Um, right now, all new members' donations are being matched three to one by the Illinois Clean Energy Community Foundation. So now is a good time to do it. Um, if you have any questions on that, you can always find information on Friends of the Chicago River's website, um, and our development team will help you with any questions that you might have on that. So with that, here's my information. Uh, feel free to email me anytime. I'm always available to answer questions or if you just have any sort of comments for me, I would be happy to answer those. And with that, I will stop sharing my screen and take a look at the comments to see if you have any questions. Okay, let's see. Oh, th thank you, Betsy, for letting us know about Open House Chicago this year. That's really great. Let's see. Is the, there's a question, is there a charge for this museum and what are our hours? Uh, yes, we do charge. It's um, $6 per person to get in with some discounts depending on your age or, um, or status. Um, the hours of the museum traditionally have been Thursday through Monday we are open and we are closed on Tuesday and Wednesday, um, usually 10 to 5 and on Thursdays we're typically open from noon to 7. Right now we are closed. I'm not sure if anyone asked this yet, but our response to um, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are currently closed 
So uh, we do plan to open later this season, we're hoping. Um, we haven't decided on a date for that yet, but we are working on safety precautions and how to sanitize the museum between guests. Um, we're going to be putting something on our website in the next few weeks about that. Um, it's, it's an ongoing problem with small places like ours, so we're trying to be as safe as possible for our members and our guests. Let's see. Are the bridge houses manned year round or just during the fall and the spring? Um, prior to the uh, prior to the schedule that the bridges are on now, so they open in the spring and the fall on a schedule. Um, prior to that, they were manned, and I believe that was year round because they had to open at at a uh, will. So anytime a boat that came up to them and needed to get through, they would have to open. Now they're on that schedule, so they are not manned. Um, the way it works is uh, as the boats go through all of the 28 plus bridges that they need to, to either get to the lake or get back downstream, uh, the team from the Chicago Department of Transportation actually leapfrogs from bridge house to bridge house. So as one team is opening one bridge, the next team is preparing the next one, and then so on. So they go from each, each one, over a course of maybe like four or five hours uh, opening those bridges. When do you think they'll announce the October bridge lifts? Uh, we have not heard anything yet. Typically they announce them around September for, um, for the fall lifts. I can't imagine that those would be delayed because the boats that are on the lake do need to come back in before it freezes. So I would guess that we'll probably have some lifts in September and October and maybe even early November this year. We'll let you know if we're going to be open for those. We do, of course, hope to be, um, but we will put that information on our website as soon as we know it. But as of right now, we, we don't have any information on those yet. Let's see. Yeah, Chicago Loop Bridges um, on Facebook and the website is a great, uh, reference for anything about Chicago bridges. Um, and Patrick McBriarty is also a great historian as well. So thank you for adding that, Ivan. Uh, Kay asks, do we need to purchase tickets to tour ahead or can we just walk in and get? So typically you can just walk in um, and we don't offer tickets online as of right now. There is a small chance that we might have to have some sort of reservation system for this season just to make sure that our um, our guests are as safe as they possibly can be. Uh, right now, we do not have that in place, so we're hoping to get that information out there soon. Um, all of that will be on our website as soon as, as soon as I know you'll know. Let's see. Did the Bridge House Museum get damaged by the river flood in May of this year? Uh, that's a really great question. Uh, you probably did see that the Riverwalk flooded, and the Riverwalk was designed to flood, so they expected that uh, it would get inundated with water every now and then. Um, of course, that was a huge flood <laughs> this year. It was really shocking to see the river walk under, under that much water. Luckily, the Bridge House Museum is at a grade that's a little bit higher, so no water got inside. Um, but I can't say the same for some of the other businesses on the river walk. I know that they did have some damage. Luckily, we did not. Um, I... I have only seen the river become that high in my uh, three plus years uh, one other time, and that was actually during an Open House Chicago weekend. I think that was two or three years ago. And uh, we did have to shut down our gear room because of it. Water didn't get in, but the, um, the combined sewer overflows, overflows did open. So uh, that was not a very nice time. Let's see if we have any more. And feel free to ask any more questions if you have them quickly. Uh, let's see. Did the outside have a renovation recently? Uh, yes, I did not mention that, but the plaza space outside of the museum was, uh, was um, uh, reconfigured last year. So there was construction outside on the plaza. So they added permeable 
uh, pavement. They expanded the uh, layout of the space so that we do have more space outside for our rentals and for seating. Um, it's quite nice. They added with our uh, with our guidance, some native plants to the plaza space. So now we have some blazing stars, some cone flowers, and some other really nice native plants that um, are both attractive and also soak up more water. So native plants have long root systems that can pull in more water than a lot of the ornamental plants that um, that you'll typically see in like landscaping and whatnot. So if you have a yard, plant natives. Let's see. If a person just wanted to see the bridge lift, what's the best way to get an alert? Um, I believe that Jim Phillips does post the schedule for the bridge lifts on his website, uh, Chicago Loop Bridges, but we will also make sure that we post them on our website this year to make sure that everyone knows when a bridge lift is happening. Even if for some reason we aren't open for them, you can always walk down to the Riverwalk and see uh, all of the bridges downtown opening and it's really cool to even see from the outside. So I suggest taking a look at that. Uh, and those are always on uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays in the spring and the fall. Let's see. Can you please post the YouTube video tour link? Yes, I can do that. Right now it's uh, unlisted, but it's on uh, the Bridge House Museum's YouTube. So I will make that a public video right after this um, presentation so that you could search it. But I could also, let's see, um, Annette Anderson, the, um, the head of our Chicago River Day and uh, who is on the back end of this would probably be able to post that link as well on our Friends of the Chicago River YouTube. Where have the fish hotels been moved to? So it hasn't necessarily been moved, but they did. But the city of Chicago did incorporate that concept into the jetty. So those have been there for several years now, and they're very successful. They're full of native plants, and um, I I don't know if there's been any studies on what kinds of fish are using them. But if you do look down, you see fish kind of interacting throughout the root systems under there. So it's pretty cool. So that's at the jetty. So that's. Um, what is the street? It's downtown on the Riverwalk, so it's right by where um, City Winery, if anyone knows the cross streets of those, maybe post in the comments. I can't remember the exact cross streets. Let's see. Yes, the uh, bridge lifts on the South, uh, South Branch are very cool too. The uh, one that Ivan is talking about near Pingtown Park is really great. The uh, vertical lift bridge. And that is, the, so uh, that's an interesting thing as well. The uh, bridge at, near Ping Tom Park, the vertical lift bridge, is one that actually does need to be able to lift and lower at uh, basically any time because it's, it holds the, um, the, uh, the train. So it does need to actually be able to lower and raise at at will, so that one is manned full time, as is the uh, Lakeshore Drive bridge. Yes, the jetty is farther west towards Wolf Point. Thank you. Okay, if anyone has any more questions, go ahead and post those quickly. I do want to thank everyone again for joining on this Saturday morning. I know where I am, it's beautiful, so hopefully it is where you are too. Maybe try to try to get outside today. I know I'm going to. Oh, okay, let's see. A Scherzer Rolling uh, Bridge. How is that operated? So the Scherzer Rolling Bridge is pretty much the very similar to a bascule bridge. Um, except a Scherzer rolling bridge has the counterweight above ground. Uh, so it still does use a counterweight system. Um, you just don't see as many of them because they're considered less attractive for some reason or to some people. All right, with that, um, I think that we're good. If you do have any questions following this, like I said, I'm always available. Uh, feel free to reach out on, um, on email or on our social media. I'm happy to answer any follow-ups that you have. Uh, check out our website and we'll be posting any information about opening the museum. I do hope that a lot of you can come see those new exhibits in person. I'm very 
excited to get those up and I'm really proud of how they came out. So um, with that, I hope that you can join another, uh, another My Chicago, uh, another uh, challenge presentation sometime soon. So thank you again and have a beautiful Saturday. Take care.